Thank you for coming. Uh, this is our our cover crop plot, obviously. And we have oh well here. We can pass these out. The first set of species here are all brassicas. Um, part of the benefit of brassicas is they have very deep roots. Um, this one over here, in particular, this is this is a, a radish. That was specifically developed. Have a very deep tap root. Для того, чтобы иметь глубокую корневую систему. When when it fully develops, this may be this long. Daikon? Может быть до такого размера. Is it a daikon? Yes. Да. It, it's a uh, daikon was one of the parents of this variety. Один из. Прародителей был daikon. Это чего? Yeah. So. Um, most of the growth of these in our climate will occur in the f uh, when the temperatures get colder. Yeah. Our summers are just too hot for these. Ordinarily these would be planted, all of these brassicas would be planted about now. Because we're on, we're on the tail end of summer here, so um, they really do not like our heat. <laughs> um, all of these have a, a slightly different purpose. We have, we have turnips. Which uh, have an edible root, of course, which livestock and people both enjoy. Kale, which, uh, very good cold tolerance, so it provides winter grazing. As, and also humans can eat eat the leaves as well. Um, salad, with salad. Yes. 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 Uh, almost all of them can be eaten by humans. Um, some of these, uh, we have the uh, carwoody radish. Which would be is uh, designed specifically to kill nematodes in the soil. Which, this one. This one. Yes. Yeah. This was uh, this is a variety that is unique to us. We we are the only people that have it. It was an, it's a uh, or, um, primarily pasture, but also makes very good salad. And it regrows very well after grazing. And you can see they're very attractive. To insects. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, what you see here, you see the value of this, and from all the butterflies here. Uh, these are a number. Of, um, these are all mustards. 
Это все, это все горчица. Горчица. Это горчица, да? Да. Um, one of the values of mustards is to kill nematodes in the soil, parasitic nematodes. Одна из причин, по которой сажается горчица, убивает нематод почвы. The other value is all this uh, has tremendous value to to uh, butterflies and honeybees. И эти виды очень любят бабочки и пчелы. Семнадцать. Это broadleaf mustard. Это широколистная if you like the taste, if you like the taste of horseradish, you will like this. So, and you might say, it's good. <laughs> it's hot. Huh? <laughs> Spicy. Uh, and tell them, feel free to eat touch, taste, anything they want What's that? You like? It's hot, isn't it? 31. Yeah. The, uh, some vetches. Um, obviously, we don't, we don't have the weed, weed pressure that we do in other places. Some nitrogen. Mm -hmm. Also, the roots give off a chemical that makes phosphorus more available. So this is tough grass. This this is a this is a grain crop in Ethiopia. Extremely tiny seeds. Uh, smaller than smaller than grains of salt. Um, here we use it. Here we use it as a forage crop. It's uh, uh -huh. does not have deep roots. No, uh -huh. It's mainly uh, used for hay because the, the stems are really fine, which makes it dry out very rapidly. The seed is small enough that it can be broadcast spread over the surface and, and it, it comes up. All of these need to be planted, I mean drilled with machinery. Okay. Um, all of these, uh, the ones you can see here, are all warm season grasses. All from here that way are all cool season. You can see that these just have much more biomass, more bulk, more yield. So if you want to make organic matter in the soil, these, these would be your primary choices. Now, all this biomass has to be, has to be balanced with nitrogen. To make the same matter. 36. This is Japanese millet, which, which will grow in very wet areas. We have brown top millet. Mm -hmm. Then we have have different uh, foxtail millet. This is German millet. Okay. 
and then white wonder millet. Yeah, that's not even the polka. Are different species or different varieties of pearl millet? Okay. These are different varieties of uh, sorghum. Yeah, it's not as you say, you can see that sorghum summer nothing compares to, to the sorghum. Each of these has a slightly different purpose. This one has the finest stem, so it's easy to uh, bale for hay. This is, is called the brown midrib. Это как это у нас вид называется коричневое ну, ребро, да, то есть yeah. что это? Жилка, да, коричневая жилка. Wild, wild sorghums and sorghums used for grain have a mm -hmm. white midrib. То есть дикие, дикие виды сорга, которые используются на зерно, у них получается вот это вот есть кори, коричневое ребро, да? Белый, белый. Жилка у них белая. Yeah. The significance of this, this is a, a natural mutation. So if we know that the crop is going to be uh, pastured by livestock, we'll, we'll select a variety with one of these. So if we You see there, there's a big contrast between these two varieties. This short one for livestock pasture in the summer. It has all of its growing points very low to the ground. So as the animals come and they bite, there are growing points always left for regrowth, so it keeps regrowing. This one, we, we will let, this one does not produce a head, no seed. And because it does not produce seed, it uses less water. So, so in, in really dry, drought prone areas, this will be a product of choice. So it has to be re remade every generation. There's another door. See. If you count leaves, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this one has just as many as this tall one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One problem with the tall ones, they fall over. This will make just as much feed, but stay standing up. So, one way we will use this, we'll let it grow all summer long. And then pasture it in the winter with livestock. It sticks up about this tall. And, and the, the livestock can get to it even in the snow. So our, we have several varieties of corn here, maize. And these also have a brown medrib. 
Тут тоже получается, да, коричневая серединка. Жилка. Жилка, да, посередине. So, so these are corn varieties that are designed to be eaten by livestock тоже rather than for the basically eat the plant rather than the grain. Yes. This is a hybrid. Uh, the next one. Um, these are two grain corns. You can see they have white midrib. And they're designed to be harvested for grain. Они созданы для того, чтобы их высевали на There's there's always a, a decision to be made about whether you grow a crop to harvest or whether you grow a crop for soil improvement. То есть нужно сначала сделать выбор, для чего вы выращиваете культуру, для того, чтобы собрать урожай, либо для здоровья почвы. The cool season stuff growing underneath harvest this for grain. То есть можно смешать эти this is safflower. <laughs> uh, 64, 65. This variety has spines that are very um, and then we have one of these varieties has spines, the other does not. One, uh, when you have the spines, obviously no livestock want to eat it. So we have one with and one without spines. People have found a lot of uses for the spiny ones. They'll plant it around fruit trees to keep deer mm -hmm. and rabbits out of the fruit trees. Разновидность, которая с колючками, она высаживается вокруг фруктовых деревьев для того, чтобы дикие животные не подходили, например, олени и не повреждали деревья. Has a very deep taproot. Очень глубокая корневая Almost three meter. Почти три, почти три метра. Is it useful for the soil? Yes. Yes. Um, primarily because of the, the depth of the root. Uh, when it produces seed, the seed has a very high oil content. It's very nutritious seed. Of course, this is sunflowers. Um, it's a, a plant that's wild here, and we weren't smart enough to make it into a crop like the Russians did. Uh, melons, squash. Uh, these are squash varieties here. And uh, one value of, of squash fruit is that uh, in the fall, um, all, most of our mixes will get pastured by livestock. Большинство смесей подходят для выпаса скота. Особая ценность этого вида в том, что осенью, вот это um, Livestock don't eat the leaves on this, but they do eat the fruit. Mm -hmm. and Получается, the, скот может есть фрукты. And the fruit, the seeds of squash fruit, um, contain uh, chemicals that will kill internal parasites. Mm -hmm. Потому что, получается, семена okay. содержат... Uh, Вещества, которые способны убить глистовку, получается, да, глистовку имеет свойство. Аккуратнее, аккуратнее. Очень вкусное. This is okra. Это окра. Окра. 69. 69. А семейство какое? It, it's related to cotton. It has cotton? A, yes. Okay. Yeah, cotton that you make clothing mm -hmm. out of. Um, okay. it, it does produce an edible pod. Um, 
Um, it hasn't begun flowering yet, but we primarily use it as a, it has a, a very, very deep taproot. Livestock also like to eat the, the leaves and the pods. Uh, Rides some, some diversity. Hey. Sugar beets. Oh. Pumpkins. And, and we use watermelon and pumpkins just like the squash. Flex. Uh, flax, we use flax primarily because the fiber. Yeah, we, we plant a lot of this stuff because we expect livestock to eat it. The problem is when livestock eat everything, there's no cover for the soil. And so when livestock do not eat this, and so the stems remain to protect the soil. This is buckwheat. Um, one reason we like it is because it produces a lot of pollen and nectar. The roots also have chemicals that make phosphorus more available. The seed can be eaten. Um, one reason it is becoming very popular is um, the sorghums over there are very susceptible to being attacked by an aphid. If we, if we mix buckwheat in with the sorghum, uh, ladybugs and lacewings, uh, predatory insects will come and to feed on the pollen and the nectar, and then when the, the aphids arrive, there's all these predators to eat them. This is guar. What number? Oh, shoot. 78. Guar. Yes. Uh, this is a legume. So it does produce nitrogen. Um, most legumes cannot grow where there is salt in the soil. What's that? Soil. 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 Yes. Yeah, this one will. Uh, this this takes. Uh, this is the most drought tolerant. Uses the less least water of all of our legumes. This is mung bean. Seventy nine. Seventy nine. And um, this is one of the cheapest, probably the cheapest legume to grow. Has a small seed. Um, the, the seed. What about the seeds? Do you grow or you buy? We we have to. Uh, it, 
it has too long of maturity to produce seed in the United States, mm -hmm. so we produce it in Africa. Um, this variety is no good for livestock. It's too bitter. This one, this one is, has, does not have the bitter alkaloids, so it's useful for livestock. One additional benefit is that the roots are toxic to a whole wide range of plant parasitic nematodes. Uh, we have different varieties of cow peas here. There are varieties of cow peas that are used for human food. And they get very small and, and produce a lot of seed. These plants get very big, and you can see they bind, they climb, and so we'll put the blend together with this and this. So this acts like a trellis, uh, something for these to climb on. And so you can get a lot of leaves in a small space. Combine this and this together. So you combine them together, you get more, more leaves and more nitrogen more animal pasture, more nitrogen than either one of them. We have beans. And those are uh, probably our most productive cool season legume. Those are warm season legumes. And uh, there are also varieties that are used for livestock pasture. What is the plain? Can I say there it's fine? Культура холодного периода больше всего подходит для, для фиксации азота в почве. Смотри, какие здоровые, ничего. Очень дорогие семена. No. And, and most people want a, a legume that they can pasture with livestock and mm -hmm. livestock don't eat this. But obviously very good nitrogen fixer. Thank you. Okay. This is chickling vetch. Um, it's a type of sweet pea. Very uh, chickpeas or garbanzos. And they, uh, 
we don't use very many of these either. They're also very expensive to grow. Okay, now the next several are uh, all uh, winter cereals. And so they were planted before the beginning of summer, so they look horrible. They, they really don't, don't like our heat at all. Is it an oat? What's that? Is it an oat? Yes. 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 This actually looks really good. No, it will look good. This is number 94. It's a, it's a tropical oat used in South America. So apparently it, it, it likes, likes the heat, apparently. We had each of them develop a mix. Yes. So, it's mixed. Mix is designed to uh, attract bees. This is what we took out of the everything left over from the rest of the plot and threw it all together. And so you can see. Yeah, you can see that uh, we have a little space within the mix. I think from my viewpoint, my opinion, that the mix looks better than any single species over there. Мне кажется, что этот мисс выглядит лучше всего, лучше, чем культура, которая выкинь каждый отдельно. А сейчас спроси, он уже достаточно высокий. Его можно оставить на на зиму или нужно сделать десекацию, чтобы он дальше не развивался? Просто оставить друга. We'll turn cattle into here. Yeah. Most of those are hybrids between sorghum and sedan grass. I like the mixtures. Uh, you can see how many different kinds of insects are in here. This mix is probably 30 kilos a hectare. All depends on what's in it. But. So, and when you put livestock out here to graze, um, almost everything gets eaten. And you have plants high in energy, plants high in protein, plants high in minerals. So, so the livestock perform Yes, usually. Uh, we were told, don't let cattle graze. You want as much plant material as possible. What we found is that the plant residue 
rots very quickly and has no lasting effect. Но мы обнаружили, в принципе, что растительные остатки, которые остаются после выпаса, они достаточно остатки быстро разлагаются. Лепешка коровья, лепешка полна, годы, годы будут давать эффект. Но с каждым годом получается куча становится лучше. So we uh, we like to graze it. We make money that way, and the soil gets better that way. So. For nitrogen. The sun here. For for biomass. The sorghum sedan, sorghums and sedan grass. That, that's going to be by far your most, your most productive choices. Um, that would be for the summer. Now, for winter crops, yeah. uh, there, there's other options, obviously. Um, rye. Uh, rye probably performs as well as anything in the winter. It's legume in the winter. Curry veg. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Rye and veg. Those are our most popular ones. And brassicas. Brassicas. Um, Rapeseed and the uh, radish. Radish has been been very good. Yeah. Not be, not only because of how well it grows, but how well the next crop grows. В этом месте выпадает 625 миллиметров посадка. А здесь полив был на этом месте? This does. Yes. This. Yeah, you can see the, the pivot. Yeah, yeah, that, that swings around. It goes over the so this, this is irrigated. Right here, there's there's a very good supply of groundwater. Yeah. Um, where I where I live, I live. Uh, Probably um, uh, about 100 kilo or uh, 100 kilometers yeah, south, south, southeast of here. Uh, we have very limited irrigation, mostly dry land. Ah, good question. Yeah. Um, Obviously, it's a compromise because you have very small seeds, very large seeds. What is main? What's that? What is the main here? The size of the seeds or what? What it depends on. Yeah. Um, obviously, we've got very, this is a very big seed. And this would be very small, and so when we plant a mixture like this, mm -hmm. we'll pick about uh, about three centimeters. <laughs> and um, now, if you were to plant this by itself at three centimeters, it never come up. But when you mix the big seeds and the small seeds together, the big seeds break the soil open, and then this can, can follow the... Yeah, it's like having... Uh, it's like following a bulldozer, you know, through the trees. The the big the big seeds break open the soil. And obviously 
it works. We have enough growing season to do either. Um, some people will grow, like we will harvest wheat in June. And then immediately you and, seed. And then we can seed another crop. Um, there's enough growing season left that we can grow another cash crop. It is summer green manure, right? Okay, we can either grow... We, we have enough season to grow another grain crop, if we wish. Another cash crop? Yeah, another cash crop for, for grain, or we can grow a green manure. What's that? And what if we do not uh, grow green manure? So. Oh, no, we can. Um, now, here's what some people, like, because we harvest wheat so early and there's so much growing season left, um, a lot of people would like to do this to improve their soil. But the economic pressures dictate that they grow a green crop. So what some of our customers have begun to do is to grow sunflowers as a grain crop. But but, but they will put all these cover crops underneath them. So that you can grow both a cash crop and a green manure crop at the same time. Now, as the buckrop is and uh, is it the problem is uh, um, not necessary not sometimes um, not usually um, obviously if you um, the good thing about sunflowers is that you only harvest the top of the plant so you can set the combine right here, and everything else is low. So we'll have legumes in here to make nitrogen. We'll have buckwheat to attract beneficial insects and make phosphorus more available. And we'll have radishes to break up the soil compaction. And after the sunflowers are harvested, the livestock come in and graze whatever's left. Покровных культур под, под солнечник на урожай подсолнечника. Подсолнечник теряет урожайность из-за того, что покровные культуры. А в засушливом климате? We get about 90% in dry climate. Yeah. Um, doesn't seem to to matter much. The the sunflower grows much faster than the other crops. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Only about a. 
When you have the mix, you get about 90% of the yield of pure sunflowers. Хорошо. А еще практически как получается? Практически, например, что сеется? Сначала сеется подсолнечник, потом сидеральная культура. Или одновременно. Или одновременно. First in priority or first in time? In time. Um, it's done. There, there are many ways of doing it. Um, a lot of it depends on the, the equipment they use to harvest. Um, the best way is to plant the sunflowers first and then in about 20 days plant this. Yes. We want to shake them up, show them the compost for stuff, and they need to be here pretty quick. So. Okay, okay, thanks. Um, so, um, but that's two planting operations, which is expensive. So most people will just mix it all together, plant it, and do it once. That's not as desirable, but it's cheaper. Конечно, это менее желательно, но тем не менее это а операция еще, дешевле. Еще какие культуры используются как основные из подсевом патронов? Подсолнечный, то кукуруза. Can we use some other crops, not only sunflower, maybe something else, corn or yes. something else? Um, this is the first one. You need a crop where the, you harvest the top. Ну, okay. прежде всего нужна получается культура, где вы можете собрать yeah. верх, верх, верх um, Corn would probably also work because, because the ear would be here. Sorghum. Yeah. Sorghum has a very competitive canopy. I, it, very little grows underneath sorghum. It, too competitive. Um, you could, but you'd have to have very little sorghum. Sunflower lets a lot of light through. And, and so, so you can have a full crop of, of sunflower and not and still have all this. So you use rye and use the veg uh, like a green manure. А если азимую пшеницу посеять с викой? And what if we use winter wheat and and veg? Пшеница на товарные цели, а вику потом гербицидную использовать. So, uh, wheat as a cash crop okay. and... Uh, I, I would not use vetch. Uh, vetch has poisonous seed. But you could use a winter pea. And, and we have some people who are planting... Yes, at planting together. Uh, we do have some people doing that. Mixing. You seem to get the same yield of wheat plus a little bit of pea. So the pea is. So the pea is basically a bonus that way. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Yes. Enjoy your stuff.